Let me ask you a question. What if you wanted a Tesla Model S and a GMC Hummer EV? You wanted both sort of in one package, right? And you wanted a vehicle that was super rugged, that could go off-road, but also had some simplicity to it and a little bit of heritage. Where do you go? What do you do? Well, actually, I might have an answer for you, and it's right behind me because this is not a regular Humvee. This is an NAEV Cyber Hummer. What does that mean? Well, basically, it's like half Hummer, half Tesla Model S. And I'm gonna take you around this vehicle. We're gonna take it for a drive. We're gonna talk about the pricing and the competition and why you would want a vehicle like this. And I have a lot of good news for you if you guys are into this type of customized vehicle. It's available right now. And they build several different types. As long as it's a Humvee setup, in other words, a cab or the pickup or the soft top, they'll build it. So let's have a little look starting right now. First of all, on the outside, for the most part, it does look like a regular Hummer. I should say Humvee because Hummer is now a term that's being attached to pedestrian civilian vehicles. This is in terms of frame, shell, and a lot of the interior, a Humvee. If you guys remember back in the day when they were building gas V8 versions of these and people were throwing uh, like Corvette engines in them, that's including Schwarzenegger. Well, think of this as a more refined version of that because once again, it's electric. Okay, so first of all, there's NAEV from British Columbia. I happen to really like this sticker, by the way. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Kind of says something right there, doesn't it? Now this particular one is, I think, one of the more common designs because it has the smaller pickup bed. It's not the full wagon version, but this gives you a lot more utility. So you're able to open this. You have the toolboxes here. The tailgate does open. This has all been lined, Raptor lined, I believed. And we'll talk about that lining again when it comes to the frame in just a momentito. Um, this vehicle, can work on NACS and CCS. You get them and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the reasoning behind that is everything underneath this, well, not everything, but most of the mechanical bits come from Tesla. And I'm gonna show you some of those in just a moment. This vehicle then allows you to go up to, at least in California, to Tesla superchargers to charge it, okay? Now, if you want to go somewhere else and charge it, you may have to use a CCS system. They're a little slow in adopting this vehicle and it has partially to do with the handshake that goes between the vehicle and the supercharging machine. Speaking of which, you wanna see where you charge it from? Yep, blah, blam, right here. There you go in the front. By the way, a place that I like, I like it when they put them in the front. That way you can pull right up to the machine and you don't have to back in, especially with something this wide. This is an extraordinarily wide vehicle. But there's good news because unlike a regular Humvee, and I've driven several Hummer EVs, sorry, I've driven several Hummer uh, Humvees, and I have driven the Hummer EV. They're both completely different vehicles. But here's where things start to get a little interesting. All the components underneath, with the exception of the frame, come from either a Tesla Model S or they've been built specifically for this vehicle to adopt it from that. And I can show you starting right here. Yep. A lot of these components, that's including the steering rack, lower components there, part of the suspension, that's from a Tesla Model S. And then of course they beat things up because this is a far more heavy vehicle. Uh, if you can see down there as well. So it doesn't have the regular A arms off of a Humvee, big giant ones, none of that. This is all from Tesla and or bespoke. 
The same goes for the battery underneath. Now it's one of the larger batteries, so it is able to, according to NAEV, able to give this vehicle, check this out, about 300 miles range. It does have regenerative braking, and grand total output is over a thousand horsepower. There is an electric motor in the front and the back. Now, you can get a rear drive version of this, which is sort of their base model, but for the most part, most people seem to want the ones with two motors, hence all wheel drive. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at under the hood ski, just like a regular Humvee. We're gonna pop this puppy open. And hold on a second here. I'm gonna get across over here. Yeah, dual motor. There we go. Okay. Ah, it's not easy to do with one hand, my friends. There we go. Look familiar? That's because all this is pretty much Tesla stuff. They did build all of this to hold batteries electrical leads, everything else, so it could work efficiently. Now, some of you might be wondering about the steering system because one of the things that happens is when you go from an internal combustion engine to an electric motor, you no longer have a regular steering pump. So what they did was they have a two-part thing. That is the rack, a nice rack, bro, from a, a Tesla. However, the actual steering motor comes from Toyota. They had to do things like that in order to be inventive and to make sure that this thing works properly. So if you look down here, okay, you can see that plate right there. So that's extra plating underneath where the battery goes. The battery is sandwiched between the frame rails. The frame rails come directly from the Humvee that this is based on. What they do is they buy these second hand, third hand, um, they take it all the way down to the frame rails, they resurface the frame rails and finish them with that Raptor liner and then build up from there. <laughs> this might sound familiar. I've actually talked about vehicles that do that from other automakers as well. But in this case, specifically just for Hummer. Okay, so let's, now I bet you're asking right about now, hey, what about, um, GMC Hummer EV and uh, what about you know because that's that's gonna be about the same price as this and you'd be about right however complexity capability all of those things when you're talking about this type of vehicle well how many of you want something from GMC that's frankly smaller and doesn't have that Tesla powertrain, and how many of you want the Tesla powertrain? I leave that question to you. I don't have a horse in this race, but I will say this. Driving one of these silently down the highway <laughs> is a little bit more unique than, say, the new Hummer EV. Now it's time to take a look on the inside. Right before we go inside, I wanted to show once again, can you see that Tesla brake? So a lot of stuff is Tesla right underneath. Um, and by the way, you may be wondering about towing. Yes, it can tow. Uh, really, it's a question of what the uh, owner wants to do. So they'll custom build the vehicle uh, based on what your needs are in terms of towing. So that's why there's no specific towing numbers, but yes, it can tow with over a thousand horsepower and truck frame. It's just a question of what you want to tow. So in other words, the numbers are not quite available, but let's go here. Ah, power windows, yo. Yep, full stereo system. That's including, there we go. See if you can see that. It's raining outside a little bit, so I'm trying to keep it in, <laughs> the camera in here to keep it dry. Uh, air conditioning, heating, of course, and 15.1 um, inch screen. And then there's in a separate spot over there for an iPhone, which I believe runs some of the infotainment system. 
a pretty simple setup over here. For those of you who are familiar with Humvees, very flat windscreen. This is not leather. This is virgin leather, meaning not leather. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, it's pretty squishy, though. Kind of reminds me of um, old school pleather, but with a little bit more give to it. Room for six, like really, <laughs> seriously, room for six. Look at that center seat. I know people who have thrown two people in here, not that that's legal, so don't do it. But, yep, you got that. And then let's have a look back here. Same basic setup as the front. You're really not going to get a big chunk of storage. However, I believe this seat is foldable, and those are cup holders. So you can change the interior around a little bit, make it a little bit more... Um, utilitarian but for the most part this is what you get and it's super wide i mean it's i uh, there's the entire tfl team it's including all the new kids could fit in here and then you could take uh, old man roman and put them back there lots of space all right let's go around to the driver's seat All right, I'm going to pop in, but before I do, there you go. And yes, these are street legal in the United States. They've already sold quite a few. Okay, close this door. All right, now we're inside. <laughs> that is, that's all you get. Yep, you see that Speedo? Mm-hmm. Um, little tweeter right there. I was wrong about this. This is actually showing, this is all for the electric system and this is a secondary or, or redundant gauge system with your speed, RPM, shows your traction control and that is your gear control. So this is the gear lever here. <laughs> Drive, neutral, reverse. Mm, see if I can, there we go. Drive, neutral, reverse. And you can go through here and see what's going on. Yeah, oh, and even cruise control right up there. Okay, anyway, there are switches down here too. And I believe those are for a lot of the exterior lights, like that giant light bar up top. But that's it. It's just that simple. Very basic. Certainly a commanding view of the road. And the fact that you're wider than a <laughs> semi-truck. Well, it says something. Okay, how about we get to driving? Okay, a couple things. Um, the Turns out that they're redundant gear lever gear buttons, I should say, that are on the main screen and also on the smaller screen. Um, in addition, there's a switch under the dash, which is actually for the um, e-brake, and you do have to trigger it. You have to turn that thing on. Otherwise, this could roll, and you don't want that. I think it's normally in a, a, something that happens with the Tesla automatically, but in this case, you do have to trigger it. So there are some things you have to keep in mind. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, yep, there goes that. That is someone else's exhaust note, that's not this. Okay, now I'm in reverse. For those of you who are wondering, Yes, if you have a tall torso, driving an old school Humvee takes some getting used to because these sills are very low. That's part of the charm. Okay, here we go. Well, it certainly makes a lot less clatter than the um, military spec Humvee. 
man, those diesels, they were loud. Although, road noise is still pronounced in this thing. I don't know if you can hear it on my mic, but it's there. Now, first of all, a couple of quick apologies. It's raining lightly outside, and in addition, I have been fighting this cold on and off since I basically moved to Los Angeles. Uh, so if I'm a little sniffly, I apologize. Um, okay. So, so far, the really driving dynamics aren't too bad. It's, um, even though it's got a big, big old battery underneath me, it certainly doesn't feel like it's any heavier than the last Humvee I drove. Now, for the record, the last Humvee that Andre drove, he submerged and managed to pill. Um, this might fare better as long as the battery is properly sealed. He might actually make it out of a giant puddle like the one he got stuck in. Not that I like rubbing his nose in it, but hey, we're old friends, right? <laughs> All right, let's try some acceleration here. Oh, whoa, jeez Louise. Okay. Man, that, that, that hits hard. You don't expect it because it's fairly easy going, like a Tesla normally is, and then when you throw your foot into it. This does have the powertrain out of a plaid. So yeah, it's not screwing around. Now I'm in the back hills in Southern California, so that's one of the reasons why the roads are super bumpy. They're not as um, well maintained as a highway, let's say. But it's still, Really, the only way you'd be able to get around this on a road like this is by cranking the music, and it does seem to have a killer stereo system. Yeah, wow. You know, the cornering is really good. Now, this car's car, <laughs> this truck is super wide, uh, right? And actually, it's one thing about I feel personally feel about uh, Humvees is that with that really wide track at the very least on roads they're pretty stable for essentially being you know a truck they're not a Jeep even though some people call them Jeeps a personnel carrier so that is noticeable let's let's try the acceleration a little bit on this uphill yeah wow god okay it it pushes you pretty damn hard certainly is not quite as refined as a regular Tesla would be and that happens to a lot of other vehicles that adopt a powertrain like this where they take the powertrain and essentially make it their own all right come on guy I'm driving an electric Humvee that's not a Hummer EV you, you need to move first Turning circle in these? Yeah. No. It's, it's bit, it, basically think of it like a heavy duty truck and you essentially are on the right track. Let's move this down here. I keep rubbing it with my neck, apologize. Okay. So U-turn, it better be a four lane and you better zoom way out in order to make that turn. Hummers are not known for being particularly maneuverable on tight trails. Really, I I was recently at a ranch and the dude was just stupidly rich. Uh, this was sort of his retirement area and he was really into electric vehicles. He actually had a, a Hummer and he also has his own solar field. He had a wind farm. He's super off the grid. This would probably be something he would dig. The torque in this thing is just phenomenal. It almost feels like the body and the components are almost fighting against the vehicle saying, hey, um, I'm not a Porsche. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the dampening's really good and that's something that they did on their own. The uh, NAEV company. Yeah, it feels pretty good. So even though it's a loud and clattery ride, and that has to do, by the way, with all of these panels. This is just how Humvees are. If you want a quiet vehicle like this, that's whisper quiet and has all the amenities and everything else, then go for the GMC Hummer EV. They're, they're not related at all. 
And that one is pretty damn maneuverable. It has four-wheel steering. This is an entirely different beast. And by beast, <laughs> yeah, I mean it. <laughs> it's a beast. And this thing just hauls. But it really shouldn't be much of a surprise. Yes, of course, Tesla powertrain. But electric vehicles have already proven themselves to be stupid fast. And with up to 300 miles range, let me use this to turn around because this is massive and it needs it. Hey, I'm on dirt, yay! But with up to 300 miles range, which I would imagine would be easier to achieve when you're driving through the city with regenerative braking, um, that's impressive. And I think that would address concerns that people have with this. First of all, the first question, is it reliable? Well, it has a Tesla powertrain. And over the years, yes, there have been some problems with some Teslas, but for the most part, their record isn't too bad. Well, we're gonna wrap this up by pulling into a place called Old Place. Really, really awesome little um, rustic place to stop and eat dinners and whatnot, but I'm not here to advertise for them. I just think they're really cool. And they got some cool um, vehicles parked around here, some wagon wheels, rustic stuff. There it is.